Hi guys! In this video we're looking at introduction to the Doppler effect, explaining the Doppler effect using wavefronts, the Doppler effect, frequency and wavelength, and we'll finish with a summary. We're going to introduce the Doppler effect using the example of a race car. When you hear a race car travel past at high speed, you hear a familiar sound. The noise tends to be high pitched as the car approaches and then low pitched as it moves away. So as the car approaches here, the noise is high pitched. And as it moves away from here, the noise is low pitched. This effect is known as the Doppler effect and it applies to wave sources that are moving. So this car is emitting sound waves while it's moving at a velocity v. The Doppler effect occurs in all types of moving wave sources. In the example of the race car, we focused on sound waves, but it applies to any kind of moving wave source. For example, these water waves here. Now we're going to try and explain the Doppler effect using wavefronts. We can visualise the waves emitted from a wave source using wavefronts. For these water waves here, the wavefronts are coming out from the person's finger like so. Each wavefront is a point on the wave with the same phase. So again we see these wavefronts coming out as ripples. And the ripples in the water here are the maximum upward displacement points of the travelling water wave. And here we have a depiction of the travelling water wave. And these points are the maximum upward displacement points which we see in the water as ripples. We can explain the Doppler effect by considering these wavefronts. Imagine an ambulance sounding its siren. When the ambulance is stationary, the wavefronts of sound from the siren appear the same in all directions. They are symmetric. So here we have a drawing of our stationary ambulance. And you can see that on both sides, the wavefronts of sound are exactly the same. However, when the ambulance moves, we see that the wavefronts change. So here our ambulance is moving with a velocity v, and we can see that the wavefronts are no longer symmetric on either side of the ambulance. In fact, the wavefronts behind the ambulance are stretched out, and the wavefronts in front of the ambulance are compressed. So on this side, they are stretched out, whereas in front of the ambulance, they're compressed. And this is the Doppler effect. The faster the ambulance moves, the larger the Doppler effect. So the ambulance is moving with a greater speed v. We can see that on this side, the wavefronts are more stretched out, and on this side, they're more compressed. And we can relate this compression to the change in pitch we hear for the ambulance and the sports car. So behind the ambulance, we have low pitch due to the stretched out wavefronts, and in front of the ambulance, we have high pitch due to the compressed wavefronts. We're now going to think about the Doppler effect in terms of frequency and wavelength. Consider two observers standing at an equal distance from the siren when the ambulance is stationary. So both of these observers are a distance d from the siren. When the ambulance is stationary, the wavelength of the sound reaching each observer is the same. And you can see this because the wavefronts are symmetrical on both sides, and both will have the same wavelength which remember we refer to by the symbol lambda. Lambda is constant. Now imagine that the ambulance starts moving towards one of the observers with some velocity v. Where the ambulance is travelling towards the observer, the wavelength of light has shortened. And we can see that as the ambulance moves towards this observer, the wavefronts in front of the ambulance that we reach in the observer have got much shorter. Whereas, where the ambulance is travelling away from the observer, the wavelength of light has lengthened. So in this case, when the ambulance is moving away from one observer, the wavelength between each wavefront has increased. Now we're going to relate this to frequency by recalling that wavelength is inversely proportional to the frequency of a wave. So wavelength is therefore proportional to 1 over the frequency. And because of this inverse relationship, as the ambulance approaches, the frequency is going to be higher, and as it recedes, the frequency is lower. So for the observer that the ambulance is moving towards, the frequency is going to be high, whereas for the observer that the ambulance is moving away from, the frequency is going to be low. 
And this explains why we hear a change in the sound from low pitched or low frequency to high pitched or high frequency. So this observer here hears low pitched sound, whereas this observer here will hear high pitched sound. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap of my smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.